In the name of Jesus, amen. I've been in this room before. There was an accident or an illness. And now there is a person lying in a bed, broken. And I am there because they want prayer. Really, they want healing. But they don't quite have the audacity to actually ask it out loud and expect it to happen. But I know my role. I stay in my lane. I pray. I read some psalms and some scriptures. I sing a hymn. I absolve them. I say, take heart. Your sins are forgiven you. And then I try not to see the last little bit of hope fade from their eyes. Because in this room, the guy lying in the bed is not wrestling with the same theology of the scribes and the Pharisees, who has the authority to forgive sins on earth. Because, you know, he still can't walk. I know it. He knows it too. Nobody has been in this room and ever really had the courage to say it. Not me, not them, not anybody folding over tissues on top of themselves, trying not to cry, but every single last one of us are thinking the same exact thing. There should be more. For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise and walk. Now I know the right answer. But honestly, it's the walking part that we're all having trouble with at, at the moment. You know, I can see this guy laying here on the bed that his friends carried him in on with that last little bit of hope fading from his eyes too after hearing, take heart, your sins are forgiven because deep down, that is not why he came here and you know it too. There should be more. And if you have ever had to go into one of these ugly little rooms, and you have ever struggled with the same heartbreak and even the same animosity toward the divine sitting somewhere in the back of your mind, which is easier to say. Both seem like kind of a stretch sometimes. Because I honestly can't understand how the God who says that he loves us would get all particular about it. Like, why has it got to be either or? Why not both? Why do some get healing? and not others. If you're willing to bleed and die to take away our sins, oh Lord, why don't you go ahead and ease this thing along and take away her cancer too? Which is easier to say. I know my role, I stay in my lane, but if I'm going to be completely honest with you, sometimes I have trouble believing both. It's not that one is any easier to believe than the other. It's really only that one is easier to see. See, I can look at somebody who was paralyzed and then walks again and see that it worked. But I can also say, in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But you all still look the same to me. You all still struggle the same, doubt the same, suffer the same, die the same. You can see somebody walk, but to believe those words cannot be by your own reason or strength. It will not come from looking at yourself, but that you may believe. See something, not in yourself but something that your Lord does. He heals. And then understand that that was not free, and that was not arbitrary, and that was not without cost. Every single miracle ever performed by Jesus, every single healing, it costs something. It is not a question of why some and not others, because every single healing undoes the damage of sin. Sin breaks stuff. And so for something to be not broken anymore, that has to address the sin. 
Every single healing of Jesus was a promise, a check that would have to be cashed later to undo sin costs blood. Every time. And so he pays it. He pays it for you. The authority to forgive sins is not found in heaven. The authority to forgive sins is found on a cross. Here, our Lord bled and died for you. Here, our Lord suffered the wrath for your sins, for my sins, for my doubt, for your anger. Here, he bled and died for all of it. And here, we can find a measure of mercy that is poured out for all. That we would have hope, not in ourselves, not even just in a one-time miracle. Not even in just a one-time forgiveness. But for all of it, because these are bound together, the healing and the forgiveness. And here, our Lord pays for all of it. And it is finished. He died for you. Your sins are forgiven, and he has conquered even death itself. Christ our Lord is risen from the dead. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And in mercy, he will not just rise up to heaven to dangle mercy down for you while you suffer down here. For again, the authority to forgive sins is not found up there, but down here. The authority to forgive sins is found on earth. You will not find it gazing into the ether, but in something solid, in something here, in something now, in something today. That you may believe that your sins are forgiven. Look to Jesus and not whether or not your legs work. Look to Jesus, and not whether or not there is guilt in your heart. Look to Jesus, and not whether or not there is wrath in your neighbors. The authority to forgive sins comes from Christ our Lord, and so does the ability now to forgive. That doesn't have to come from broken and angry hearts. Now it doesn't have to be found and won and earned by pulling back roofs and dropping people down from the ceiling. Now it doesn't have to be proven by walking where you could not before. And now there is just Jesus for you. And that's enough. Because our Jesus talks to me and my doubt to you in your anger, and to him lying in a bed as the devil tries to wrestle that last little bit of hope from him. Jesus speaks the hard words that cost him everything so that they would be free for you. Your sins are forgiven you. Because the hard part, it's already finished. Which is easier to say, honestly, I, I still don't know because now it's not that one is harder than the other, now they're both free. Now it's not either or. Now it is both. With one comes the other. With forgiveness comes the life, comes the resurrection, comes the salvation. And it is not just easy and it is not just free, but it is for you. In this life, if you are still looking for your miracle, mark your healing the same way you would mark your sin. Your sins are forgiven you. But that hope won't be found in measuring yourself, but by measuring the promise, measuring the cross, measuring the Lord. Your sins are forgiven you, but you will still struggle, and you will still sin, and you will still fail, and you will still doubt, and you are still forgiven. Because Jesus died for you. Pile up every single last time you fell into the same sin over and over again. Put them all on the floor, point and laugh at them. Laugh at their inability to condemn you. They have no power here. Your healing has already been paid for too. And if you don't see it just yet, look to the empty tomb and know where it waits. Because we will still not measure our legs, but our God. And if you are still waiting for your miracle, laugh at that too. Because there is no disease or accident 
that can stop our Lord from saving you. There is no suffering on this earth that will pull him down from the cross, no bad thing that can happen to you that will put him back in the tomb. He is still risen, and it is still for you. I still don't understand the timing of it either, but then again, I don't understand how to work the fancy settings on my washing machine, and I don't understand how God could die, and I don't understand how a dead God could stop being dead. I don't even understand which is easier to say, but Jesus does. And he pays the price for this man lying in a bed, and for me, and for you. Whichever words are easier to say, he still lets me say them to you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.